Take your enjoyment of Smodco Podcast to the next level by checking out a live Smodco show. HBO at the Improv in Hollywood on Friday, March 25th. Celebrate April Fool's Day with HBO at the Hollywood Improv. Iowa City gets an evening with Kevin Smith on April 9th. Kev inflates the Helium Comedy Club with two shows on April 10th and again on the 11th in St. Louis. Get old with Jay and Bob Thursday, April 14th at the Irvine Improv. April 15th means two things. Your taxes are due and you need to catch Babylon at the Hollywood Improv. Mike and Ming are at Pop Con, April 15th and 16th in Evansville, Indiana. Monday, April 18th, Charlotte, North Carolina gets Kevin for two shows. April 19th, Kev performs twice in Richmond, Virginia. An evening with Kevin Smith in Atlanta on April 20th. Austin, get ready for Kevin Smith's solo at the Moon Tower Comedy and Oddity Fest, April 22nd. April 22nd through 24th, Muse hits Motor City Nightmares. Jay and Silent Bob get old in Austin on April 23rd. Jersey reunites with Kev in Atlantic City on April 30th. New Brunswick gets a slice of Kev on Sunday, May 1st. Tickets to these and all Smodco shows are available now at Smodcast.com. Hi, I'd like to bring this meeting to order with a brief prayer of thanks to our Savior. Our Batman, who art in Gotham, cowled be thy mane. Now, y'all know Kev Smith's a big old fat man, but did you know his favorite hero is Batman, the Dark Knight who punches dirty turkeys in the face? That's right, Cape Crusader. Punch all those turkeys. Punch them in their turkey necks. So once a week, now this no fly list fat is going to put the food down and get chatty about Batty, and this turkey gets wordy about Gotham like it's a real place. He ain't got time for his wife or daughter. Catwoman's losing Batman and Carter. Go get a Cape Gazetta. You want to pussy on now? Ha <laughs> ha! Get ready, Turkeys. We going bat shit. Babbling bat the bat with old Kevin Smith. Now here's the fat man who loves Batman himself, Fat Kev Smith. Get on out here, Turkey. Welcome to Fat Man. I'm Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Hey, look at this, man. Old school. Yeah, ear candy. What? Slipping right into your ear canal. Doing it and doing it. The ear pussy. We're uh, we're doing it with no, with our eyes closed this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you're doing it with your eyes closed this week. No visual component, but fucking, this all shit began in front of a microphone. Uh-huh. And I was, as I was reminded by <laughs> Bobby Moynihan on Saturday Night Live this weekend, I do like podcasts. Podcast, podcast. <laughs> that was awesome. As an old school, I watched the very first Saturday Night Live. I've been a Saturday Night Live man my whole life. And that's what I originally wanted to do before, even before films. I was like, I want to be a writer for Saturday Night Live. Um, this weekend on Saturday Night Live, they did Celebrity Jeopardy. And <laughs> I, as when the sketch began, I saw a very familiar jersey <laughs> on the stage, and I was like, "No, no!" Did, did they call you, or did they just mock it up? They just made it. They, I saw the Reebok label on it on the sleeve, so they grabbed a you know fucking Reebok Edmonton jersey and then just modified it at the front. But regardless, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Um, and like, I got off light. It wasn't like you know fucking stabbing me in the heart <laughs> and in the eye a thousand times where I was like, I used to like us. No, yeah. it was awesome. Woody Allen took it harder. Oh, shit. Did. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's Steve. Hey, player? So did Jennifer Lawrence actually took it harder than I did. <laughs> I'm just a normal girl. Eat was, snacks all the time. That was really funny. He's like, how annoyingly relatable you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was pretty damn dope. And, uh, it, you know, if you wait long enough, kids, you get everything you've ever wanted. <laughs> I always wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. Well, I kind of was. <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm up in Vancouver, Slam Coover, mm. um, making uh, Flash. We We shot... A piece of an ep- of the art, my episode last Monday, mm-hmm. because we were losing two of the actors uh, for our shoot week. So it was like, well, let's grab it while we can. They were like, how do you feel about do- like directing early? And I'm like, well, I'm here. I get up at 5 a.m., <laughs> bitch. I direct early every day. <laughs> um, so we, we directed a little bit uh, last uh, Monday, which was nice. A nice way to kind of like break the ice mm-hmm. and see how everybody works and stuff. And, you know, I was really concerned that I would not be able to do the job. You know, everybody fucking hates my guts. Like, you can't do the job anyway. But in the par- in the world where I can do the job, because <laughs> that's why they gave it to me, um, I was nervous that I would be there and not have an opinion. Mm. Like, essentially, they'd do a take, and I'd just be like, it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's such a super lady. And then just, <laughs> and then just move on. But I actually, like, had an opinion after each take. 
Like, and not like, here's my opinion, or just enough to be like, all right, let's do, we can do minor correction and do this and stuff. So that was a relief. Jesse Martin, I love you. That's my opinion. Yeah. Just keep going. I was like, here's my direction. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> keep crushing. And walk away. <laughs> I saw him. I sat down with the cast, did a read through mm. of the script, and they like brought it, man. I thought we were literally going to read through it, but they acted it out. It was pretty awesome. Um, it, it looks like it's going to be a good time and they're very well prepared up there. We had like a zillion meetings and stuff. I've, there's some things in TV I've never done before, like hmm. a tone meeting. Oh. That's where they go through the script and scene by scene, tell you what the tone is. Cause this is a writer's medium. Like if anybody's, you know, like, fuck, I want to, I want to be uh, in charge, but I'm a writer. And the only way to do that is by writing and directing indie films. That's what I thought. Had I known that in TV, the writer is king, I would have went fucking to TV. Like, my God, that's that's who controls television is the writers. Yeah. They call them different names, though. That's mm. all. It's like, here's an EP. Right. Here's Here, the showrunner. Yeah. Executive but, producer, co-executive producer, blah, 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 blah. It's all writers. Line. Yeah. Writer, it's, a, it's the best kept secret in the world. <laughs> that's where writers go to fucking die and become gods. I know. Like you, television. Even like the lowest level writer. When they're on set covering their episode, they kind of call the shots. And it's bigger than the highest level director. <laughs> I'll tell you that. So, um, yeah, the writer's fucking king in that medium. So you go through the script. We do a lot of shit via Skype. I wonder what they used to do back, I guess, just fucking. They wouldn't shoot in Vancouver. Phone like it would, it would all yeah, be where they do in the Los Angeles. Lot. But since the, you know, the production to, or the writing and the executive producers and mm. I don't know what you would call it, creative because it's creative. I'm yeah, the entire well. staff, though, the writing staff, writing is staff all. is down south and mm. here in Los Angeles and everyone else is up north. So they Skype and have meetings and stuff. So we had this one meeting, a tone meeting where they go over one of the helping brothers um, who runs that show, mm. went through the script like scene by scene to be like, you know, OK, so in this scene. Like, they're feeling good about things. Like, literally, the tone meeting is, like, if you're tone deaf, <laughs> let me explain <laughs> what this happens. This is in We're every doing scene. fucking cheery. But apparently it's necessary because some cat, and this is what blew my mind. I mean, I guess it shouldn't blow my mind, but some people are like, what's this show about? I've never seen it. <laughs> like, there are working directors that just, like, do mm -hmm. 10 of these a year, and they don't all watch the shows that they work on. They can't. I guess not. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm a. I just happen to be a. I'm a fan who just happens to have enough like you know credi credibility or bona fides behind me to direct the episode. But they're like, you're a rare beast, dude. Like you come in. Like we were going around. I made a joke about like the we, we were. They were like we we're doing a scout. They're like, there's the exterior of jitters, CC jitters, mm. and um, I was like, well. Uh, and then uh, JP was like, well, let's stop and get coffee. I was like, let's get coffee at fucking Jitters, man. I'll get a flash. <laughs> and uh, my man in locations was just like, it's nice to have somebody on the show that watches the show. <laughs> like, that's deep cuts, knowing the fucking name of the coffee. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it, it's like, I guess it's not, I just assumed everyone's like me. Mm. But not necessarily. Not like like, I hate the show, but I'll direct it. But I thought every like you wouldn't go near the Flash unless you were remotely interested in the Flash, and same for like I wouldn't go near America. Was that fucking House of Cards on right. Netflix? Well made show, but like I would never like if in fact if they called me I'd be intimidated. I'd be like, oh god, no, your show's very good. <laughs> <laughs> There's no room for error there. You, you can't have me there. People die if the show isn't good. <laughs> yeah, and they watch it a lot on that Netflix. <laughs> so but flash like i felt like i I just thought i assume directors just lean toward the shit they like but some some don't yeah some are just like just hired guns yeah. yeah bombing in i'm here for 10 days bombing out what's it's next crazy man. Is there a magnum pi i can shoot no <laughs> <laughs> if there was likely wouldn't be here in vancouver there's so much production up there dude on the vancouver film studio stages not just flash is there mm. but arrows there and Legends is there as well. Mm. So, you know, it's they all have their own worlds and sets, obviously, but they cross a little bit. Like, um, some of the Legends folks were shooting on some Flash sets, oh, yeah. like, last week. Yeah, yeah. And, some, and Flash uh, episode of, no, Arrow was shooting on. It seems like they, they 
hey, let's fucking yeah. go to Flash. Why not? They, if they got the Cisco, assessment. make me a suit. There's that's the thing. They could always do that kind of mm-hmm. like crossover thing. That's been the other fun thing about being on the show, dude. Is I know what happens all this season, <laughs> except for the last episode. But I I know the whole storyline. I, I have I have a preview a little bit of next season. Ooh. Um, I get I me mean, obviously I can't give it away. It's not my information to give, but. Oh my God, I was sitting there going, no, no, yeah, but in a great way. Yes. Not like, yes, it was the no that was yes. <laughs> the only time that no can equal yes this is when a geek is just like, oh, do it to me harder. What? <laughs> Who? Yeah. That's, yeah, it's like when they, yeah, there's some good shit coming. Yeah, excellent. It's very cool. Um, So, yeah, man, it's been like a real, like, I, you know, my biggest fear going up there obviously was like, I'm going to suck at this. But you can't. You can suck at it. But that machine is so well oiled that you wouldn't suck at it. You'd have to fucking go well out of your way to suck at it to suck <laughs> at it. And you know, honestly, they don't even need a director. Like mm-hmm. if I got shot in the head on my way, w- just about to walk on set, and the Winter Soldier took me out <laughs> <laughs> across the fucking alley or whatever, they would. They could. They you know they, they might be a little sad because we've been spending a week together. Like oh, he seemed like a good guy, mm-hmm. but they could go on shooting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're ready on one right so, okay let's go like oh what a waste uh the fragility of human life here we go everybody roll us down quiet on set we're hot <laughs> move that body to the shot <laughs> um it's been wonderful to watch what an education but all those people up there like they all like the show that's the nice thing mm. everyone working on the show likes the show they're not like whatever dude it's about a guy from america that runs fast like not at all <laughs> All of them are like dialed in, give a fuck about the stories and stuff like that. They're all storytellers. So uh, that's that you, you know, you sit there watching the show and you go, why? Why do I connect with this show more than other shows? Why is this night, Mark, different mm. than all other? Maybe that's going a bit too. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. Into the fake. But uh, it's more about like, why, like, why, why do I connect with this on every level? Why does it work so well? I, th- I this is just my estimation, but. I think the shows that really fucking punch through and make you go like, oh, fuck. Mm. You get the general impression everybody wants to be there. Yeah. Same, that's what this is. Like, you don't have anybody going like, fuck, man. I'm like, seriously, boy, run and show. Come on. Like, everybody <laughs> fucking loves it, believes in it, and they all like doing it. And they know they're making something cool. I think that translates. Yeah. I mean, like, you look at stuff that should not work on the surface of it. Like This show should not work. Yeah. Like, Battlestar should not have worked. You're absolutely but right. But everybody believes. Like, everybody believes in that mission, and everybody's committed to, to executing at the highest level they can. And once again, the writer's king in that medium. That yeah. show was about an idea. Mm-hmm. More so than, like, you know, monster of the week, space of the week, <laughs> fucking problem of the week. It was, you know... That was a writer's show. God, yeah. it's so weird. Why did I fucking skip television, Mark? <laughs> That's what I'm waking up to this week. I'm like, you know, I fucking thought I found an easy path with indie film. Where I'm like, I can do whatever I want. Blah, blah, blah. Fucking, I could have done whatever I wanted as a writer, and I would have been a lot wealthier. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Like, that's where writers go to become rich as gracious. <laughs> because once you got a show on the air for, like, I don't know, Two seasons? Yeah. You're, it's, it's nuts. You're gold. They back trucks of money up to your house. And once you're Berlanti with like six shows on the air. He probably owns a country somewhere. He just, he's shopping for islands, you know, on, <laughs> on, his, on his off days. Island Nation. Island Nation. <laughs> Where he's like, we could shoot the next show here. And the next show is Batman on an island. Because <laughs> they're going to give him one sooner or later. He's just like, how about that Hawaii? Could we get that Hawaii? I'm like, well, so I don't know. It's gonna Gotham be. 5-0 on Hawaii. <laughs> it's like, why does Gotham have to be a shithole? Can it be <laughs> on a beautiful island? Um, yeah, man. That's true. Like the Norman Lears of this world, the oh, Greg dude. Berlantes, mm. the fucking like the John Wellses, the John Wellses, the John Wells is so wealthy from television. He did mm. ER. He finances his own like movies. Yeah. Like he's not like me where I'm like, brother, can you just pair a dime? He's like, fuck it. I'll make it. <laughs> he made a movie for 25 million bucks or something. <laughs> Done. That's television, dude. Television is the ability to make a movie. <laughs> In your spare time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's real fucking, it's, it's pretty fascinating. What an education it's been, but, uh-huh. but, uh, fun. And, and, uh, but now the real work kind of begins. Yeah. yeah. But again, like, like the DP Kim dude, like that's, he's like, I'm here all week. Like I'm here every day. <laughs> like you get to come and go, but like, I'm going to make sure the show looks phenomenal because like, 
Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been staring at these people for 10 months. He's forgotten ways <laughs> to shoot angle. He's forgotten angles to shoot yeah. these people from. He shot them so much. And so, and he also knows how to play the every room. Mm hmm. Because, you know, sooner or later, there's an end to every set. But he can, like, that place looks big. I was on the floor where they, you know, the season finale was, where he was running through the mm -hmm. fucking tunnel, where Wells was in his prison cell and shit like that. And it's crazy. Like, you look at it, it was when Tyler, the production designer, pointed out, I'm like, holy fuck, this is this room. It's tall as fuck. It's a giant set. And for an episode... For the episode prior to mine and for my episode, mm. they had to build a contraption mm. um, that's at play. And it's a gigantic machine. And I def like, I've been around movies 22 years. I defy anyone to tell me this is not cinematic, like level, uh, I want to know, set building. Like, mm. it looks like you could shoot Batman v Superman on this motherfucker. But they're shooting Flash. But there's no difference anymore. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like... All these shows treat these shows, the, the, their material so like cinematically that there is no. He, when we were kids, it used to be like, there's TV and there's movies. Like, you know, you could tell the difference between all the president's men and the six million dollar man. <laughs> but it's now. Six million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ironically. But now it's like, you could show the flash on a big screen. Like, if you just yeah. shot it fucking a little more widescreening or whatever you don't even have to do that most yeah. tvs are kind of like they're already hd exactly so i mean you could it's it's i mean maybe it's like uh ridiculous to say or redundant at this point but like they're crushing it in tv land so i mean i, I know this because i watch way more tv than i go to the movies these days and the consistency and the speed with which they could do it dude like we've been waiting three years for batman v superman since the moment they announced it and now we're finally going to see it soon mm. Somebody handed like Tyler, the production designer, a fucking script two weeks ago and said, We need, you know, this giant fucking machine. And he two weeks later, it exists and they're shooting it. Yeah. And then maybe a month or two later, we're gonna watch it. Like yeah. they yeah. satisfy dreams and demands so fast. Like even from jump, even from the we have a pilot script, mm -hmm. let's go shoot this pilot. And then let's put it on the air. That is an insanely fast turnaround. Yeah, if the pilot gets greenlit in January, they start shooting it in March, and it's picked up for series or not in May. And they got to build a whole world. And they got to build a world in two months that's got to look great for five years. And 22, dude, is tough. 22 hour longs? Mm. Like, you know, I sit there going, like, we're working on Hollyweed. Hollyweed would be like 10 episodes mm. if it gets picked up. This, you, you know, fucking that's that's the luxury of like, you know, oh, we're on cable or we're going for streaming or whatever the fuck. Network TV is just like 20, 23, dude. They're doing yeah. 23 episodes, 23 yeah. hours, almost one full day of fucking flash programming they're going to produce <laughs> over the course of a year. And they do it like and and unlike, you know, there's that rule in TV with rules sevens or something where it's mm -hmm. like you got seven great episodes, seven OK episodes and seven dog shit episodes because you're moving so fast. They can't all be great. Mm hmm. I, on Flash, they actually fucking pull that average way the fuck up. There's no dog shit. No. So there's like fucking 12, 11, 12, 13 fucking great and 10 good. So either way, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's like so-so episode of The Flash. It's like, oh, that's pretty good. It's like even a so-so episode of The Flash is is like a half-hearted blowjob. You're like, oh, my God, it was in something warm, wet, and I came. <laughs> and nobody bit and everything was great. <laughs> No like, complaints. Yeah, it's like it was okay pizza, but it was still pizza. That's true. And there's no such thing as bad. Well, you know, that's, that's true. I had a fucking slice of pizza. Up. <laughs> Let me tell you. Canadian pizza. Oh, my Lord. Vancouver <laughs> can do a lot of things right, but I walked into a pizza joint, got a slice. And to be fair, the pizza joint I walked into is not should not be held as indicative of all Vancouver pizza. But I walked in and I honestly thought I walked into an aquarium because <laughs> the gentleman running this pizza shop had more fucking fish on display in the saddest <laughs> aquariums I've ever seen. Not like there's some fake fucking weeds and rocks and like empty, dude. <sighs> These fish just hover <laughs> in boring. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Hoping they don't end up on a slice. Or actually praying for it. They're just like, that would be better than this. Kill me now. Yeah, make me that anchovy. <laughs> um, it was kind of fucking nuts. And then so I got a slice of pizza. And, oh, man. 
<laughs> <laughs> it was not. Like it's hard enough in LA as a, as an East Coaster to be like. At least it resembles pizza. Yeah. Right. It's kind of pizza ish. There was no suggestion of a crust. <laughs> It was just tablet of goo. Yeah, kind of like <laughs> like almost pita with sauce. And like, have you met an Italian? Oh, cheese. Yeah, yes. <laughs> almost like somebody explained the concept of pizza to this guy using all the wrong language. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, I got it. Yeah, done. <laughs> and he fine. went for it <laughs> and built a fucking business on it. And then was so lonely, he surrounded himself with fucking fish. Um, yeah, it was not good. But other than that, Vancouver does a lot well. Um, all right, let's jump off of Flash. All right. Before I fucking, because sooner or later I'm going to be like, you know what's going to happen? By the way, totally. <laughs> oh my god, uh, some shit's going to make me. It made me happy hearing about it, <laughs> seeing it's going to be like a religious experience. Um, let's dive into some news, shall we, Mark? Sure. Uh, the biggest news of the week. Yeah. Why? Why we lit the beacons? Oh my lord! Why? Why I had to rush home from <laughs> <to> Vancouver? <laughs> They're like, you got to direct. I'm like, nah. I got to talk about this. Nah, son. It's I'll be important. back. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fine without me. See you on Tuesday. Um, they dropped the Marvel uh, Captain America Civil War trailer. Yeah, number two full trailer. And, and it was the furthest thing from number two. No. Unless it was number two for straight from the anus of the Lord himself <laughs> and and God number two's unicorns. Yes, who were then number two-ing like strawberry sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good this trailer was. <laughs> God unicorn. <laughs> Put that on a poster. <laughs> this trailer was phenomenal. I wasn't expecting it. Nobody said it's coming. Nope. It honestly just felt like a real fuck you to Warner <laughs> Brothers. That's what it felt like, dude. Like we're here with less than what is the date? We are now on the 13th. So that means we are two weeks out. Like, yes. Two weeks out. From less than 12 yeah. fucking days. Right wow. now, tw 12 days from now, we will have seen Batman v Superman. Mm -hmm. um, and boy, oh boy, Marvel couldn't just give it to him. <laughs> couldn't just be like, go ahead, enjoy your week. Enjoy your victory. And <laughs> Good stuff. luck, guys. They fucking threw a trailer out there that makes you go... Fucking move over, Batman and Superman. I can't see Spider Man. <laughs> Underoos. How did they make us excited about the same bullshit we've seen now? <laughs> but a thing we knew was coming. And we knew it was coming. It's no surprise. And one could argue is like puzzling to the mainstream. Mm hmm. This incarnation of Spider-Man. Yeah. Because the mainstream's used to watching these movies, got big plastic eyes and stuff like that. They showed us a Spider-Man that essentially was the Steve Ditko Spider-Man from the old Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man, that yeah, cartoon. Super bright, super just. And his eyes were expressive. His eyes were, and we heard photo aperture going zzz, zzz, mm -hmm. with his, as his eyes moved, which was smart. <laughs> leads us to believe Tony Stark probably built that mask for him, although Peter Parker is a scientist. It's true. But what is the reason for the... Z -Z -Z Maybe public? they have, like, Spider-Man Club. Like, Science Club with Tony Stark and Peter oh, Parker. and God. Where he's like, the only thing we have in common is science, because you're poor and I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> but science like, you're brings 15. us together. Yeah, and you're a child. I'm, I'm a man. sleeping with supermodels. <laughs> <laughs> but science binds us. <laughs> um, we saw a fantastic fucking Steve Ditko-looking Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. so the youth on the internet were a little puzzled. So yeah. I saw some people reacting like, what the fuck is with his eyes? And it's like, dude, what's with his eyes? <laughs> that right there is Marvel going, you didn't think we could possibly show you anything different with spider-man yep you were fucking wrong <laughs> bitch what we did oh my god with one fucking what 10 second shot they reclaim the glory of their fucking flagship character mm -hmm. um of their masthead character of spider-man uh, that made me so excited not just for civil war but for the new spider-man movie yeah and i haven't said that Maybe ever, dude. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, maybe the first time I heard about the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, I was like, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. But now I'm like, oh, my God. Fucking that's fantastic, dude. That just those eyes being expressive, moving, and, and the dark black around them, and fucking what they're probably doing, if I had to guess, this is the first appearance of Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. You're going to look like Ditko. Next time we see him, Maybe he looks a little different. Maybe he looks like 
you know, Todd McFarlane's Spider Man. Maybe after that, he looks like you know what I'm saying. So right. forth, iterations so on. of it. Yeah, and rather than just being like, let's make the costume with the raised webbing and the big eyes, like they've done in the right. movie after movie, Marvel cats were like, yeah, we're done trying to make Spider Man real. Yeah. We don't have to. Yeah, like, think about it. He shoots <laughs> fucking webs. <laughs> and they're just like, so we're going to make those eyes move. Yeah, like there's, the, we have a universe with a Hulk and an Asgardian god. <laughs> Why does this dude have to have like basketball knitting outfit? Why? So smart. So smart, man. I, you, the, you know what that's from? That's Kevin Feige sitting, forced to watch 20 years of Spider-Man movies <laughs> going, if I was in charge, and now he is in charge. Yeah. And so we got, here you go. Oh my, it's fantastic. Dude, what kind of fucking amazing world do we live in where Spider-Man's eyes grow and shrink on the mask? That's so fucking dope. The one thing that was weird though was when he spoke. Mm. I'm like, what? Okay, Spider-Man looks like, looking at his musculature, mm. he looks like a grown ass man. Yeah, but he sounds like, he sounds hey. like he's 12. Hey guys, oh, it it's me, awesome. it's me Spider-Man. It was so nice to hear a kid's <laughs> voice as opposed to, like some forty-five-year-old man. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. Hey, I'm in high school. <laughs> I got your shield. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was perfect. Perfect line choice mm. of, you know, hey everybody, like, <laughs> whatever it was. Just a perfect intro to that character. The trailer was so good. I forgot. I didn't honestly think mm. they would show a Spider-Man. I thought yeah. they would be like, fuck you. Yeah, I see at that. this point, they didn't need to. No. We were all going anyway. Yeah. And the trailer looked amazing. That shot of the fucking two teams running at each other. Almost like the opening of the Super Friends and shit. And fucking Hawkeye shoots Ant-Man. Through Tony's fingers. Yes. Like he lands through the glove and on his arm. So you know he's going to like grow up and mm. punch him in the fucking noise. <laughs> Probably in the face. Yeah. Um, it, it, all of it is great. Like it's just a fun fucking. This movie looks fucking amazing. And then, like, it ain't even a cherry on top. It's like they gave you this amazing Sunday, and then just when you're like, "Oh, I'm fucking done," they're like, "Here's a bigger Sunday." <laughs> <laughs> you're like, "Oh God!" Did you like your fudgy the whale cake? Here's another fudgy the whale cake because I'm Tom Carville. Wednesday is Sunday at Carville. It wasn't Wednesday or Sunday, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> oh, they could swirl that shit right into my mouth like a soft serve machine. Do it. Oh my lord, it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, that felt strategic though. Oh, it yeah. really felt like they didn't need to run that trailer. They certainly need to, didn't need to run it now. And it's also two and a half months out from when their movie comes out. That's crazy, dude. Like, That's will literally be a- two fingers in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the fun of fucking these comic book movies now is like <laughs> that old Marvel DC feud. <laughs> like Marvel ser- take it seriously and they're still like poking DC in the eyes. They're like, we're not even up and running yet. Would you fucking <laughs> give us a break? <laughs> no. Nah. We're going all in now. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, man, like Deadpool made it hard for Batman v Superman mm-hmm. uh, because you're like, here's something completely different. And even though Batman v Superman is like, you've never seen these two fight before and stuff, it doesn't seem like, you know, right. like we're, we're reinventing the wheel here. And like Deadpool also seemed to be a commentary on how dark and ridiculous these movies have gotten. Absolutely. You know, Function on a couple different levels. Yeah, but it was very much just like a gloss on the... You can actually have fun while doing this. It doesn't have to feel like it's, you know, we're quarter so midnight. Serious, yeah. yeah. Everything's why so serious. Because it doesn't have to be. Yeah. So it was kind of like, and, you know, believe me, I don't even think that was like Fox going, let's fuck with Warner Brothers. Fox, yeah. was, Fox was terrified of that movie. And then they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> then they realized, holy shit, we might have yeah. something here. And it's, a, it's as much a commentary on, you know, Man of Steel and the upcoming Batman vs. Superman as it is on, like, Brian Singer's X-Men, yeah. which are very serious Very movies. serious movies. You know, they had to be in, you know, 2000 when you're launching it, but it doesn't have to be in 2016 when we can just have some fun. I'd be, uh, I if I was Batman v Superman and Deadpool happened before me, I'd be like, fuck. Just made my job harder. Yeah. But that fucking trailer and them going, here's what Spider Man's going to look like and be like in a movie that's coming two months after this movie <sighs> is a real fucking <laughs> thumb in the eye, finger up the ass. Mm-hmm. You don't no, have not to. Not in a good way. No. Yeah, really. Unasked for. <clears throat> not like. <laughs> more just like hey out of nowhere. <laughs> Pardon me. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, look, Batman v Superman can do very well. But. Yeah. It's just a real kind of like, fuck you. 
by going like, yeah, we're going to show you. We're going to pull our spider cock out right before you go fucking sleep with who you think is mm. your dream mate. Like, that's the thing. We're all like, oh, Batman v Superman. And all of a sudden, fucking Marvel dangles little neck and tip <laughs> as we're heading down the altar, down the, down the aisle to the altar and stuff. Just makes you stop and think before you commit those vows suddenly you're like wait a second Damn, hold on <laughs> <laughs> what's going on over there i don't know how many analogies we can come up with <laughs> but fuck this trailer was fantastic it was uh, great cut trailer great fucking positioning in terms of like let's get that out mm -hmm. there now you know and it's, it's excellent use of spider-man and it's so much about tone like it like the movie feels it feels apocalyptic in a way, but the apocalypse is an emotional one. So yes. you're not seeing a bunch of shit go down unless it's directly commentating on the horror of so much shit going down. Yeah, the like they about. show us the only time they show us giant buildings going down this time is when they're like, this is what you've been yeah, doing. Your fault, guys. Yeah. Here's Sokovia in New York. But they also like gave us like, you know, at the end of the Batman v Superman, the second trailer, I thought she was with you. Mm. You know, they're like, that'll slay him <laughs> and that wasn't like you don't want that's the one guy in the world you don't want quipping no he don't quip you He's, don't want bad jokes you don't no. want the batman forever credit card no it always goes wrong and it's believe me i'm not saying like that ruined the movie but it's not at all but that's why a lot of people reacted the way they did like, mm. he's holding a gun <laughs> what looks like a gun and he's making fucking jokes um but this trailer ends with under ruse, which number one is like genius, <laughs> so fucking genius. Um, like, doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter. Well, apparently they exist in their world. I I, I guess so. And We're, is there? Do they even make them anymore? Will a kid no, understand that? Not even close. It's all right. He's, he's, it's, it's, it works for me, dude. Oh my god, I loved it. It's the first time I watched it, I was like, "Did you say under ruse?" And then I couldn't think because they showed me a web and they showed Cap's hands webbed together. Captain America webbing on his wrists, and there was fucking Spider Man holding Cap's shield. That ought to be their fucking new logo. <laughs> Marvel, we could do anything. Really, it would be like Spider Man wearing Batman's cowl, <laughs> which is next yeah. to Hey, guys. <laughs> I, can't, um, I can't see. Oh, my God. It was fucking glorious. So, yeah, man. Fucking Civil War. I'm so. Dude, if that's Civil War, if that's Captain America 3, how fucking insane is Infinity War going to look? I can't imagine. You know what I'm saying? When they pop that trailer up and mm. you're like, Oh, it's all of this, but in fucking space. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, the, the, that's the genius of this universe is that Kevin Feige has turned an entire populace into comic book nerds. Yeah. Who are now waiting for the ultimate contest of champions, which is basically this movie that will have 70 characters in it. Oh, my God. Just like flying around, punching each other in the face. What you hear is the table lifting because <laughs> I'm just getting so turgid. You know, like, because I remember when, when, you know, you're looking at something like Batman Forever, mm -hmm. you know, where, okay, how many bad guys? I mean, we're introducing Robin and then, okay, we got Two-Face and Riddler and then these eight characters is too many characters. You can't tell me a story that has these many characters who all need origins and blah, blah, blah. Now we're going to get everybody yeah but we know all those stories except for thanos yeah and there are those of us who know thanos story as well but they're gonna do a very good job of explaining it yeah and we might actually finally have a marvel villain worthy of like you know more more than just loki <laughs> it was like whoa okay loki right. okay. or like tony stark's evil twin yeah. <laughs> um it, it, I, I don't know man it's crazy but here's what based on that civil war trailer mm -hmm. now i'm aching for an Infinity War trailer because think of the shot selection involved. You know what I'm saying? Like these cats at Marvel don't cut a bad trailer. Mm -mm. Think of the fucking wow moments that they are plotting right now. Kim Feige going like, we're going to need this because you got to finish these shots way to fuck out. Mm -hmm. By the time Civil War happens, you know we're probably going to get an Infinity War trailer, right? Or something. Mm -hmm. I think you'll get Black Panther. I, think so. I don't think you get Infinity War. They're yet. shooting it right now, though, aren't they? No, I don't think so. They're not shooting Infinity War. If they, if they are, they just fucking started it. Yeah, maybe you're right. So then, or oh, or Doctor Strange. That's probably what we'll yeah, get. Yeah, we'll totally get Doctor Strange. We'll totally we might get a sneak at Black Panther. But you know they're plotting that trailer now, yeah. dude. And he's sitting there going, "Okay, 
we're definitely going to want you got to finish these shots visually way far out he's like we're definitely going to want the thanos fucking pulling tony out of the armor shot mm-hmm. like like the way you would fucking <laughs> take a fucking chicken and debone it or something like that. <laughs> um you put that shot in a trailer fucking everybody's like i'm fucking there he deboned iron man like a chicken <laughs> Um, just think of that, dude, because somebody sat there, probably Kevin Feige, and was just like, okay, we're definitely going to want Ant-Man on an arrow blasting through Tony's fingers. Mm-hmm. We're definitely going to want, you know, fucking uh, Black uh, Black Panther taking Winter Soldier off. Do you see him hop over that fucking car? Yep. With the legs. And just almost swipe at sp- the bike. Oh, fucking swipe. tits, dude. And just there's a very emotional shot of what's the actor who's playing him? Oh, um, Chadwick Boseman. Like after an explosion, what looked like a UN or some sort of shit in a suit. Yes. So yeah, his hero origin or not hero origin, but kind of like I'm in now. Like the reason (laughs) why he's fucking there trying to get the winter soldier. Now we're getting more of the story in the trailer Mm -hmm. too. So the black Panther, he don't like the winter soldier either. Cause obviously he did something bad in Wakanda. Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. It's like fucking, this is why I'll pay and overpay for those movies because you get like this about anything in life? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got children. <laughs> Do you get like this about your kids? <laughs> I went and saw my kid's show last night. She did a musical. It was lovely. But I could talk about this Marvel trailer <laughs> from now until the day I die. I don't think I'll ever talk about the show again. <laughs> it, was, it was a lovely show. She did very well. She did great. But, like, come on. <laughs> did you see Black Panther take that guy off the motorcycle? <laughs> We can do fucking hours on it. He shot Rhodey out of the sky. Oh, all of it, dude, is just so right. Like, they're just tuned to my vibrational frequency. It's perfection. Um, all right, so that, there's that trailer. There, that happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we, scene. Then there was another trailer that dropped, which I talked about in Hollywood Babylon, but we should mm. talk about here. Mm. Ghostbusters trailer Yeah. Uh, dropped, and boy, did it drop. Mm. Um, and it has shown up as one of the only anythings on YouTube that has more dislikes than likes. Like even that girl who sang it's Friday, Friday <laughs> I think she had more likes than dislikes. Yeah. But this Ghostbusters trailer, the first one they put up was last I looked, it was 150,000 likes, mm-hmm. 300,000 or more dislikes. Like it was crazy. Wow. Um, a lot of people reacted poorly to it. And the reason why, I think, is because you got a fucking tall bar. We all know what Ghostbusters is. And the trailer, that first trailer they went with... It was not good. It's not strong. No. Now, as I've gone to great lengths to explain and, and make sure that everybody fucking understands, like I have nothing but hope for this movie because, in fact, it's beyond hope. There is no way that Paul Feig fake, yeah. and Melissa McCarthy... And Kristen Wiig and Leslie Jones and, and Kate McKinnon. McKinnon. That, those are five bona fide funny people, legit funny people. There's no way that they don't make a funny movie. No. I don't give a fuck. And we've already seen a little bit of evidence of it. If you, There's a second trailer. An international trailer. International yeah. trailer, which is actually funnier and cut better. Mm. Like, you know, it's a lot of the same material, but the presentation is all fucking different it's almost as if they were like well let's not do that <laughs> that was horrible oh my god i don't want that fucking reaction and they put in a little more thor uh what's yeah, chris this? hemsworth chris hemsworth but it's uh, you know it's a better trailer i don't know what to yeah. tell you that trailer is better trailer if they had opened with that trailer there might still be some grousing about like where's all the jokes and shit but there were more jokes in that european trailer yeah I international mean, trailer i think that there's the there's those two different prongs of it there's it wasn't a good trailer mm. And this was not the first way to come out and make your case for your movie. Uh-uh. But there are also an entire swath of people predisposed to hate this movie. They were they were on the edge of their seats yeah, already. Like they just, you know, they they are butthurt about, you know, the, the you took my Ghostbusters away and you, you made them it. ladies. Yeah, and you did things to it. Yeah. And they were already poised. Like even if you turned out the fucking best piece of marketing, mm-hmm. even if you turned out a piece of marketing on the level of fucking the Civil War trailer mm-hmm. or the insanely artful Suicide Squad, both yeah. trailers. If you led with that, mm-hmm. still you'd have some grousing. Yeah. There would there would still be a decent, you know, 
fraction of the of the population. You know, I don't fucking want yeah, it. Fucking, I'll see it. Bullshit. Or maybe on video yeah, or whatever the fuck. Redbox that shit. Exactly. They fucking. They. Damn. What do they? They condemn you to fucking Redbox. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're gonna come see you in the theater, man. Yeah. Nobody who hates something that much can wait till Redbox. No, so I gotta, gotta know today. I gotta know how much I hate it. <laughs> you guys, we're gonna have a meeting. That if they had if they had done everything correctly, that's you know best case scenario. They stepped out with the not the strongest foot to put forward, Mm-mm. and it just made every one of those fucking animals jump. Like everybody yeah. was like, "What? I know it. And you it has, fucked with my childhood." It's got nothing to do with gender. Like, yeah. I don't care. Make every one of those people in that first trailer a man mm. and sell Still the same jokes. It's <laughs> a bad joke's a bad joke. And it's, it, you know, somebody pointed out, I was saying that feels like a trailer put together without having had a test screening. Mm. Um, like maybe it was put together in the dark, so to speak, without having, knowing what audiences will find funny. Somebody else online pointed out, like, maybe those are the only shots they had done, the effect shots. I, but I would... You know, I'd pull Kevin Feige and plan that shit months out and be like, these are the shots you need done because yep. this is the trailer. Mm-hmm. No matter what tone you put on it, we need these shots. Yeah. You only get one first trailer. Yeah. You only get one first first impression. Yes. And theirs was <laughs> difficult. So they've got, you know, look, I, I'm they got my money. I'm fucking mm-hmm. going regardless. And a lot of people are going to go regardless. Yeah. But, you know, for those haters, that did not help the cause much at all. But, I, again, I submit to you, that's not the movie. There's no way. There's no fucking way those five people don't mm-hmm. make something fucking enjoyable. Um, somebody pointed out online that, like, the spy trailer was not good or not as mm-hmm. good or whatever. And it's true. I remember watching the spy trailer and being like, I don't mm-hmm. care. But when I saw that movie, I was like, it's fucking way funnier than that <laughs> goddamn trailer. So I think this is the case with this. And I think the evidence is strong for the movie based on, or stronger, based on that international trailer. Yeah. You know, they, there's some jokes there and some story there and some, some original shit that you haven't seen before. And, you know, fucking Leslie Jones doing a stage dive and being like, <laughs> I don't care if it's a woman thing or a black thing. That's funny, man. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate that that's how they. And did you notice the international trailer makes a change at the top? Mm. So the American trailer says four sci or four scientists save the world mm. or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. This one says four friends. Thirty years ago, four friends saved the world. Huh? Isn't that isn't that interesting? I guess science and friendship can't live. Together. Never. <laughs> you can't be friends with a scientist. Science friends. Somebody should tell Tony Stark and Peter Parker you can't be science friends. Proving thus further that fucking Mr. Wizard hated all those children. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm a man of science. I can't be friends with a child. Bill Nye, the science guy. I hate you. <laughs> can't fucking stand you. <laughs> Huh. Nah, um, kid, what you do is you light that on fire, and I go in another room while you explode. Fuck off while I think about the reality of science. <laughs> you children, fantasies. All you want to do is play. Science ain't play. It's exact science. Neil deGrasse Mike Tyson's punching children. People like him, though. They do like, like him. See, and he seems to like people. You know, he's very gregarious. And stuff. <laughs> he's he's gregarious. the one that breaks the mold. He's like, I'm the one scientist that loves. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I'm a giant heart. <laughs> Do you know how the heart works? And then he opens up and shows you inside. <laughs> Watch as I vivisect your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Science. <laughs> it hates your parents <laughs> more than you. <laughs> um, okay, so we did that trailer. We did that trailer. <laughs> We're minutes away from Batman v Superman. Yeah. Uh, you cannot avoid marketing is everywhere. Mm-hmm. All the billboards are here up in town. I mean, this. I wonder if that's the world over. If that's just Los Angeles, I think it's kind of everywhere. Is it? I mean, Los they, Angeles, they, they fucking jam billboards up your fucking ass because everyone lives here yes. and they want to drive past their billboard. And yeah, stuff. It, it is less for the people and yeah. more for the people who make the movie. Pretty much. <laughs> a lot of ego up on the in the sky here yeah. in Los Angeles. A but, bit. oh, it's everywhere, man. All those posters of him about to punch mm-hmm. him in the face. Mm-hmm. And the cereal boxes are all in stores. And... You seen anything? You heard anything? Uh, I've spoken to a couple of people who've seen it. How'd they see it? Uh, early, early journalist screenings, like long lead press. So they have to do that for a long lead. lead? And, uh, the, the response is mixed. Really? Yeah. Mm. It's mixed. Mixed. mixed in, now the people that are the not positive side, mm-hmm. are they comic book people? Uh, yes. Really? Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. I'm seeing it on Thursday. Are you? This fucking Thursday? This Thursday. Where are you going to be? Fucking. <laughs> God damn. I'm going to be making the DC movie, son. <laughs> seeing it come to life. Yeah, it's like you can watch it. That's the only thing it. that'll make up for like not. You know, seeing it in Batman early is like, mm. well, I'm making the Flash. <laughs> Not so bad. I, guess. Yeah, I can't really complain. As far as consolation prizes go, um, but yeah, I guess I'm gonna fucking see it with you know yeah. everyone else and with stuff. the people, and then we'll talk about it in Detroit. Yes, that's right, man. Mm-hmm. We got our first fucking live show coming up, folks, in Detroit. What weekend is it? The opening the weekend, thirty first. So it's so the weekend. It's the weekend in, after the opening yeah, weekend. Yeah. So the dust will have settled. It'll be Thursday night, the thirty first. It'll be its first. We'll be out of town, so we can be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody here? Yeah. Oh my god, we're here. we're in Detroit, <laughs> and we can choose not to put the episode up. All right, let's talk. <laughs> Ooh, let's guys. really talk. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm fucking. I'm still down, dude. Yeah, he's gonna I, do it right. He looks good, and I'm all you know. I'm all for fucking Spumoni. Don't have to be one flavor. Like I love the Deadpool flavor. Mm-hmm. I'm okay for fucking more straightforward beat 'em upper flavor that Batman v Superman seems to be handing us. Um, and also, come on, dude, fucking, they're gonna launch a universe in one movie. Just, <laughs> just go, just all in your face, and whether you like it or not. We're off and running and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm can't wait. It's such a good time to be fucking a fan of this shit. Cause yeah. in the, like since Deadpool's February 14th, mm-hmm. I'm February 14th, one month and a week, one month and 10 fucking days, 11 days later, Batman v Superman. Two months after that, Civil War. Two months after that, mm. Suicide Squad. Two months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Do you sense a pattern here? <laughs> and don't forget, fucking, because you're seeing clips and trailers all over online, Daredevil's about to happen, mm-hmm. which we all know fucking yeah, like rules. Next weekend. Yeah, they're dropping a little early. I think the 23rd. Once again, a real, like, fucking... Oh, oh, were you releasing a movie? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me just pull my other giant dick yeah, out. Did you want a new cycle to yourself? Because I don't think he's going to get one. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> it's not enough to win. They just got to defeat everybody else. <laughs> Scorched earth. Wow. Um, I respect that. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I don't want piss on the ashes. The oh, my God. Go down some You're doing a total fucking <laughs> Al Capone on him, aren't they? <sighs> um, oh, God. It's nuts. Um, and, but it's good for us, dude. All it's this competition is great for an audience because it just means each one of them. You ain't getting, you'll never get, you know, everyone's, oh, Joel Schumacher, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You ain't ever get one of them movies again unless it's somebody doing it intentionally to be like, remember this? Yeah. As yeah. an ironic joke. We will never be on another quest for peace. No. <laughs> fuck, dude. Oh, it's a quest for money now, man. Mm. A quest for eyeballs and earballs and fucking attention and building franchises and world building. So, my God, these movies are only getting better and better. And at least the trailers are. Yeah. And fucking, when you see the movies, you're like, oh, fuck, they did it. They did it. I know. People keep on, you know, ragging me a little bit online. It's like, man, how come you don't want to love Batman v Superman? It's like, you're always down. I was like, I want these movies to be great. Yeah. I want them all to be amazing. Look, I already love Batman v Superman. (laughs) I don't care. I don't care how bad they fuck it up if they fuck it up. (laughs) I'm going to love that movie because that's the beginning of DCU right there. Like, now we're seeing pieces go to God. Dude, I've always wanted to see Batman and Superman together in a movie. Of course. Of course. And now we're going to see that. But more importantly, they're going to be like, here's your Wonder Woman. Here's your fucking cyborg. Here's your, you know, I ain't too keen on the idea of a new Flash, but because they got a perfectly fucking fantastic <laughs> Flash. It. I'm telling you, man, they should really reconsider and just be like DC movie universe and TV universe. You should marvelize it. Yeah. They've already done the fucking hard work, man, of like, here's your, here's your origin. Yeah. Just put that fucker in. Ah, Yeah. Like Marvel has taught an audience to be okay with it. Yes, the the heavy lifting of converting an audience into the continuity mindset is done. Yeah. So just you know, you don't need to rebuild this wheel. No. <laughs> just fucking let them run it. into it. Yeah. I know a thing or two about a thing or two, mm-hmm. uh, and I can't share. But Supergirl, as we all know, mm-hmm. upcoming episode is going to meet the Flash. Yeah. And who is the fastest man alive? I think is the fastest person alive. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> um, yes, there's an image of them like race. There's, I imagine, there's a race involved. Yes, there better be otherwise. But um, it is. I know how it happens. I know how it how it happens on Flash as well. Like there's a bit of connection. It's all very clever and wonderful. But I also heard some stuff. <laughs> oh. About Supergirl got picked up. Yes. 
So and so did Flash, and so, so did all this. All the CW basically shows basically got picked up. Nothing Berlanti has his finger on got canceled. That's true. Oh my God, could you imagine in yeah. Berlanti land That's... on that island that he bought? <laughs> They're probably buying another island <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we want to duplex this shit out. So oh my God, that next one over. Well, like, don't you just quit that day because you're like, I'll never have a better news cycle than this. Yeah. I'm just, All of my shows on different networks got picked up. <laughs> um, I would have to get caught killing like a bus full of hookers <laughs> in order for this to go wrong. In order for them to be like, oh, Greg, <laughs> sit down. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All the hookers. All the hookers. Yeah. Unless there was a good reason. Was there a good reason, Greg? <laughs> Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, everybody. Did they like, what somebody? possibly good reason could he have for murdering people? Were they teaching kids science again? Yeah, <laughs> science hookers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Never about love, only for money. <laughs> um, yeah, so they got picked up. So Supergirl's happening mm. again next season. Mm. And I, I, there's, there's some cool shit in the hopper. Cool... <laughs> multiverse shit Ooh. in the hopper yeah i was like uh, uh they just like they're real secretive up there with mm. good reason yeah have to be um but like i got some dope i had to pry it out of fucking cold dead fingers and stuff but i got some dope that i was like oh dude you know what else here i'm calling it yeah right. you know what else is going to be fucking astounding hmm. you know berlanti's doing riverdale yes fucking a dude they're shooting it right now mm -hmm. up there I've seen a lot of the elements at work and stuff, and I've been talking to folks who work on it and Flash as well. That show is fucking. I want the, now. I want to see that show. Really? Yeah. Like, I, and it was kind of on my radar because they talked. We talked about it on Babylon, and it, they said Berlanti's doing. It. I was like, I'll watch that fucking dude do anything, including my wife. He's so good at that job. <laughs> so you know, I was like, right on. Like a Archie show that'll be interesting. And the take on it is fucking like it's not like hey, we're all. Archie, it's not everything is Archie. It's it's very Twin Peaks, mm. and it's the town is a functioning ca character. Mm. It's fucking good, dude. Like where you're like, holy shit. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Like right away, because all the elements, like you see the design books mm. and the fucking and the and I saw Archie getting picked up. Yeah, had to be Archie. He had unnaturally orange hair. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a movie star with weird orange hair. I was like, that's got to be does it. Archie. Um, they're shooting another show up there right now, which is that DC Universe office type uh, show. Powerless. Powerless. Yeah. I always want to say damage control, mm. but that's the Marvel. <laughs> which they're also version, doing. Which they're also doing, but not shooting right now. Like, so I ran into Vanessa Hudgens. Mm. She's up there shooting that. And our boy's in it, who's on mm. our show. Fucking uh, two dicks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The king, Alan, the king of two dicks. Alan, she king said, uh, she goes, do you know Alan Tudor? I said, no, I'm, I know both of his dicks. She said, uh, he's very funny. And she said, the guy from um, Community is on. No, Joel well. McHale? No. Danny Pudi. Yes. Danny she Gale. said he's very funny as well. Yeah. I went into Alan at uh, Long Beach Comic Expo. Mm. I was down there for a panel. I was like, oh, hey. Alan two dicks. I didn't say that. The man of two dicks. The man of two dicks. Man of one world of two dicks. <laughs> the uh, and also a shout out to your boy, dude, hmm. Zach Stentz. Yes, is the writer of my episode of Flash. Um, and boy, did he fucking crush it! Like oh. the, once again, the writer's king <laughs> in this medium and stuff. And like, he gave me a beautiful fucking gift. Whether he knew he was giving me that gift or mm. not. Beautiful fucking gift. This episode, I couldn't ask for a better episode for me to direct. There That's are awesome. elements at play here that are like, oh, like perfect for me. But Kevin, wrote, you have to stop crying. We're picking it up on mics. Dude, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm going to have to tie a pillow to my fucking face to get through some of these scenes. But so much so that like the, the you could tell the cast mm. dig it too. They're like, well, we got something here. No, nice. Um, and it, it's and really strong stuff. Zach is a friend of Mark's. Mm. He's also he's a movie guy. He's like a feature when, writer. When Mark was telling me, he's like, I think a friend of mine is writing your script. I was like, oh, all right, well, mm -hmm. fucking, you know, I guess you get who you can get or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like, he, he wrote one of the movies. He's, he's like, who's that guy? What's he ever done before? It's like, well, he wrote Thor <laughs> and, and, and X Men X First Class. <laughs> and I was like, oh, is the so, egg so. showing? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, they got a legit fucking screenwriter to write this fucking episode of The Flash. Um, I guess, like, they write a lot in-house, mm. but then there's a couple per yeah, year they, that they assign out. Yeah, they save, like, three or four for yeah. just freelancers. And they got Zach to do one, yeah. and, and fuck, did he crush it. It's a wonderful fucking script. Yeah. Um, that's I mean thank God could you imagine I got up there and I was just like well number one there's never been a bad episode so right. I don't think unless this was the first one I got there and they're like here you go <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake it just says the fake flash on it <laughs> and I'm like what does that mean and they're like nothing just shoot it it's like we figured they're gonna watch it because Kevin Smith is directing it we don't need to make it good really I'm just being punked <laughs> they're like the real episode is being shot across town <laughs> these sets are clearly not the sets dude did you notice <laughs> they're like you're just too polite to say anything because you love the show so much <laughs> chokes on you but there's masking tape on everything <laughs> yeah. this isn't real set and the Flash's suit is, is Green Lantern's suit and you didn't even say anything <laughs> it's like the Rock Ridge of Flash <laughs> <laughs> Um. so it is uh, yeah it's a great fucking Oh, that's amazing. Great script, man. He did a wonderful good to hear. job. And the the cast gets to do some cool stuff. And mm. there's some cool fucking like deep cuts, continuity stuff we were able to weave into the episode as well by way of like locations and stuff like that. Um it, it's a, you know, it's a group effort when you put together um one of these things. That's the what's different from the world I'm used to operating mm. in. You yes, it's always a group effort to make a film, but there's you know, you don't look at Tusk and go like, boy, the crew must have come up with some of this. You know, that's that's one vision of one idiot. This is like the visions of many talented craftspeople mm. coming together to tell the story. Not your story or mm. a story, but the story. It's right. pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, all right. So, wait. We talked about that. We talked about that. Um, was there any other big news that we had mm. to hit? I don't know. I don't think so. It's been a weirdly, like, other than those things. Yeah, other than the ones that we fucking, I mean, Marvel owned the fucking week, yeah. pretty much, with that fucking trailer drop. Um, we're almost there, kids. Batman yeah. is about to V the fuck out of Superman, mm -hmm. and we're going to see every fucking frame of it. Every yes. frame of it, man. There's that one movie theater is selling up, like, a Bat Pass, like a gold mm -hmm. card that you can buy, and you can see the movie at once a day, every day, if you want. Okay. But I, it's like a hundred or two hundred dollars. Like it's a pretty steep amount. Where I'm like, huh. knowing full well that like nobody's gonna do that. Like yeah, give us two hundred dollars and you'll see it five times. And somebody had to have done it, dude. Somebody fucking so. bought it. They're, I mean, they'll, they'll buy. It. They might not go every damn mm. day. So that means the moment those anyone buys that card doesn't go one day. These cats are <laughs> we win. Yeah, they, they're, they're like <laughs> we're in the red or black. What is it? We're in, yeah. we're in the fucking good thing. Yeah, we always, got money. Always been on black. Always. Is that what it is? <laughs> so red is bad and black is... Uh, when you're in the black, your company's good. Yes. And you're in the red. Red is a deficit. And always been on black is mm. what Wesley Snipes taught yeah. us. <laughs> That's Jim 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 said. <laughs> <laughs> the wit and wisdom of Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Remember there was a time when they talked about Wesley Snipes was going to be the Black Panther? Yeah. Like a long time ago? Yeah, yeah. For sure. We've lived long enough that like a fantasy... Like, because there was no fucking, like, it was something like, oh, one day, maybe. It was probably a wizard fucking, you know, <laughs> imagine if. Fan casting. Totally. But we live in a world where there is not only going to be, like, somebody's actually playing the Black Panther. <laughs> he, we're seeing him in a movie already. We've watched him in action. It's insane. It's nuts, dude. Fucking nuts. Stack deck over there, dude. Seriously. Like, if if even if you're like, motherfuck Spider-Man, bam, brand new yeah. Black Panther. Yeah, like brand new character for this movie, you know, like the Ant Man days. also kind of new character. If you right. didn't see that movie, or if you did, putting him in the context, and finally they give fucking Hawkeye something to do: <laughs> <laughs> shoot Ant Man and shit. A launching platform <laughs> for your other real hero. <laughs> they keep trying to do shit with him. First movie is a zombie. Oh god! Fucking like Avengers sequel. He's you know family man. Funny guy, but I'm, now they're like, "Look, you just be you, and I, you is a fucking setup, man. You're Dean Martin, and this motherfucker's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you are Arsenio Hall <laughs> coming to America. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I'll tear him apart. <laughs> you become Marvel's scene. <laughs> Yeah, like at some point, Marvel will finally decide to, for good and for real, kill somebody. And it's you know that be, somebody's yeah. going to be 
Oh, no. my God. You know he better be the first to go in that new Avengers movie. Oh. In Infinity War? Because, come on, dude. They're all going to space. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no place. It's like, what am I fucking doing in space? He even said it in the last movie. <laughs> He's just like... The- the city is flying, and I'm fighting with a bow and arrow. <laughs> no, this makes sense. Um, yeah, man, fucking, I think you may have called it, dude. Mm. He may be. Could you imagine? Nah, they're gonna want him in Avengers. I was gonna say maybe he's the fucking backdoor kill of Civil War. Everyone thinks it's like Rhodey, right? But maybe it's like finally somebody <laughs> realizes <laughs> up. We don't need that motherfucker at all. If we're fighting, let's kill this guy. Yeah, we already got a normie. Like, the like Widow they, is our normie. We're not going to kill. See, they couldn't do that, dude. There's no way on earth they let a hero kill one of their heroes. Mm. Um, if they let one of their heroes die ever. But you're right. The process of elimination dictates that they got to fucking <laughs> cannon fodder is Hawkeye. Pretty much. So He's the red shirt of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Sooner or later, he's got to be sacrificed. There's Spock and Bones and Ensign Jenkins. He's got to look at them and know that he's Sam Rockwell in Galaxy <laughs> Quest. <laughs> I don't even have a last name. <laughs> Um, if they wind up doing that, though, it would probably have to be at the hands of Thanos or something. Yeah. Which would be like the most ridiculously overmatched. Yeah, it fight. could be at the hands of a mugger at a 7 Eleven. You don't even have to <laughs> wait for Thanos. Yeah, he's courting death in the far <laughs> reaches of the, of the universe. <laughs> like a drive by. What back. happened to Barton? I think he was going for a Zagnut and <laughs> <laughs> a guy shot him. <laughs> like, who was it? Was it Dormammu? <laughs> no, it was like, uh, it was a guy. It was, <laughs> dude. It was honestly. Honestly, it was a white kid who's 19 and he fucking <laughs> came in with a gun. It's fucking nuts. Just took him out. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, that's how Hawkeye died in the Marvel The fall of a hero. <laughs> it's like the opening five minutes of fucking <laughs> Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all sad about the death of Barton, and then all of a sudden, hey, some shit's on in space, and they fucking <laughs> drop trow and go right up. Sorry, I hope the wife and kids are okay. Do it for Barton, and then they all head up in space. <laughs> Send them back to the farm, and we go. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. <laughs> no, they like that guy, man. I, I, I guarantee you, they're not gonna kill fucking all guy <laughs> just because you want it. <laughs> <laughs> but why not? Damn it! Gonna, I bet you they'll sack. I mean, they'll find a way to kill Tony Stark before they fucking kill all guy. <laughs> like this motherfucker's cheap. That's why, dude. That's why. Like, you can't afford Robert Downey Jr. at a certain point. The day that Robert Downey Jr. comes in going, like, I want $100 million to play Iron Man, and he can't because these movies meant billions. Uh-huh. So if one guy is like, look, let's be honest. Like, you can't do it without me. I'd like $100 million. They'll be like, ooh, but they'll be like, make it rain. Okay. Now, if Hawkeye walks in and is like, you know, I want a hundred thousand dollars more. <laughs> like you're dead to me, Hawkeye. Sorry, and the audience. I want to get the craft services in front of my trailer. Isn't there a Lady Hawkeye character? Uh, yeah, yeah, in the books. Well, who is she? Um, sister, girlfriend, I think wife. She's, no, no relation whatsoever. No relation whatsoever. Just takes this fucking costume. Yeah, well, I think they're like buddies. They team up after a while. There you go, man. Yeah. Swap him out for fucking. You know what makes Hawkeye interesting? Being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> if you change that character to Lady Hawkeye, everybody wins. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is great. It's like watching Arrow with all those girls that shoot arrows. <laughs> now there's two ladies in the Marvel Universe. Everyone shoots arrows on that Arrow show, dude. They really do. I've seen a clip or two, you know, of the episodes I watch mm. when I, whenever I watch Flash and that crosses over. Mm. And there's Speedy, and then there's Arsenal, and then there's Green Arrow. Thea. And yeah. then there's, I mean, everybody is sooner or later whipping yeah, out. Max Merlin. They've got to do <laughs> like, Merlin. they must have done a Mexican standoff with just bows and arrows, right? Oh, like every third episode. <laughs> <laughs> huh, should we shoot? No, we're not shooting. Okay. That's the amazing thing, dude. Like, why it's amazing Flash works as well as it works is they don't even have the gimmick of like, we've all got weapons that are kind of cool to look at, even though they don't really make much sense. Mm-mm. Like, I mean, they make sense in a world where there's no gun. <laughs> right. in the world where you're on an gun, island, <laughs> this arrow thing is a little <laughs> fucking dated. But Flash, that could at least work because it's like, you know, we like seeing weapons and, sh- <clears throat> and shit. Flash is, you, you're not even supposed to see anything because nope. he's supposed to run so fucking fast. <laughs> and that's his one thing. But man, every week they find a way <laughs> to make speed work for this guy. I am sure somewhere, whether you've seen it or I don't know if anybody's seen who's not on that show, but there is a whiteboard somewhere 
of just lists of shit you can do with running fast. It's gotta be. And gotta everybody's be. welcome to add an idea yeah, when like, they what come do you got? in. That's your job, buddy. Your job, young intern, is to sit in the corner and just think of things you can do with speed. If as life happens to you, you would yeah. think of shit like, oh my God, I fucking dropped my pizza, but if I was Flash, I would have <laughs> caught it. No, like, that's an episode. <laughs> yes. Barry the waiter. Here we go. <laughs> so, like, that's a finale right there. <laughs> what I always love, and it even it exists in my episode as well, is there's always like a pseudoscience kind of like, what's he doing? Mm. He's, and then a paragraph about <laughs> right. what he's exactly doing with his speed. And I would have felt cheated if I didn't have that. <laughs> And I have it in my episode as Excellent. well. I saw it and instantly I was like, oh, God, thank God. It's an official Flash episode because yeah. you have to explain this for some people. Yeah, the Star Trek writers. Yeah, Ronald Moore, who was a writer on Next Generation, then Deep Space Nine, and then went on and to Battle Star, Battle Star. Yeah. But he used to talk about writing episodes of Star Trek where there would just be passages where all he would write was, and so Jordy text the tech into the tech so the tech does what the tech needs to do <laughs> yeah. and somebody else would figure it out and, and so just he, figure out what to say yeah just like we're reversing the quantum polarity on the inversion field so that we can you know hybridize the magna thrusters and then go so he just essentially put a placeholder yeah, just for dialogue tech the tech into the tech so the tech does what the tech needs to do that's genius. <laughs> and i think we just copy and paste that into scripts that's fucking genius. and so when he got to Battlestar, it's like we are never doing techno babble we are never teching the tech it is just this does what it does this is a cylon they've got this if it's doing a thing we're explaining the thing right but it's not just words to say he, he's walking on water how's he walking on water Okay. So well, the power of particle physics. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and let me explain that to you in a couple sentences. Yeah. If he hits 652 miles an hour, he can run up the side of a building without falling down. I love that shit. All right. Oh, my God. I love do it. Do it. I love when they do that. I love when someone realizes what's Barry. And it's usually Cisco. <laughs> yeah. Realizes what's Barry, what Barry is doing. Right. Somebody will be like, what is he doing? And Cisco will be like, he's using his speed <laughs> to. And he fills it in. Captain Exposition. But in a really entertaining <laughs> way. Um, and I love that shit. I'm like, that's the information I need. Because I'm the idiot who watches that show and goes like, what happened? Because <laughs> usually somebody has to explain it. Thankfully, on that show, so there's Cisco to explain it. <laughs> um, that's it. That's all we got news time for, man. Pretty much, man. Emergency. Watch vinyl. Have yeah. you seen it? I have not seen it. It's good. Is it? It's enjoyable. It has nothing to do with our world in terms of geekdom mm, yeah. and stuff like that. But 70s, it's nice to see rock. the 70s kind of mm -hmm. come to life again. Early 70s. Um but it's been real enjoyable. Yeah. All I've, right. I've kind of dug it, but more than that, I mean, clear your schedule because Daredevil's <laughs> about to happen. I know. And that's what? <clears throat> easily 10 hours? I think. Get ready to give up a day of your life. Oh my God, what a great month this is. Yeah. Daredevil, Batman v Superman. And we're going to have a special Daredevil guest on the, on the video podcast. Are we, we going to have, well, you're going to be in Vancouver, yeah. so you don't get to play. Where, but uh, Lexi Alexander, Oh, the directress. Who directed uh, the Punisher director. War Zone. Yeah, oh, what, the fucking best Punisher movie ever made. Yeah, um, yeah, she's a fucking shooter, man. Yeah. And, and she's directed... Um, Supergirl. And she? Arrow. Yeah, 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 and Arrow, yeah. I've seen her name on other things. Yeah, but so wait, so she directed... Did she direct some Daredevil? She didn't, but she's the person previous to this who had put Daredevil on screen. So she's going to... When? With Warzone. Oh, put Punisher on screen. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I was so, like, yeah. Daredevil. Um, yeah, yeah, Punisher. Punisher. That's right. She handled the Punisher. Before. Yeah. So she's in Really in. well. And, you know, that dude was probably, I, for my mind, a lot of people are like, fuck you, it's Tom Jane. That dude looked mm -hmm. like the Punisher. Yes. And played like the Punisher. Mm -hmm. um, He's like a tank. But yeah. Oh, my God. And I loved him on Rome, that actor. Yeah. Uh, but Barenthal, dude, fucking can't protect him, Rick. <laughs> He he may I think he made to find it, dude. Yeah. With the, he, oddly enough, the shaved hair on the side like really fucking does a lot. Yeah. Lots of millet, the high and tight, just yeah, with the fade. Um, it's, always in a war. Yeah. Oh fuck, I can't wait, dude. He's gonna beat the fuck out of the Punisher. Yeah. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Can't protect the wreck. Can't protect the city, man. <laughs> One bad day away from being me. Just throw that in. Just one. <laughs> you been watching The Walking Dead as well? No. It's good. Yeah. yeah. I've heard great things. Something's about to happen. Yeah. Something's are, always are, about are to happen. Are the other dead going to walk? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they did a fucking episode this week that was pretty like fucking holy shit. Where, you know, normally they're fighting the dead, mm. but they were. This wasn't even fighting the living. I mean, spoilers. Mm. So if you haven't watched it. They like go in and kill fuckers in their sleep. I was very disturbed by that. 
<laughs> it was weird. I felt real like, oh, that's it, that that may be the thing that like unsettled me most on that show oh, really? all this time, because they showed them like you know these people are just sleeping in bed and holding fucking like Glenn's got a knife over the dude's fucking face and and then they just cut up to Glenn and you know you just you just hear and you know they just stab this fucker through the eye in the sleep and he's dead. That's a little fucked up. And he was a living person. He wasn't mm. a fuck. And these fuckers didn't do anything to them. It wasn't even like they killed Maggie, like or something <laughs> like that. They fucking, they just mm. attacked them. It was fucking weird. I felt very not like fuck this show or something like that. But I was like, oh my god, that's the most of all the horrible things I've seen on that show. Like I'll never sleep well again, <laughs> knowing that somebody could just stab me through the fucking <laughs> eye and brain and kill me in my sleep. Thanks, Glenn. I know. <laughs> my God, dude, it's like. You go to sleep going, oh, I got some shit to do tomorrow and stuff like that. And then you don't wake up because somebody stabbed you to death in your sleep. <laughs> I didn't think about that For a before. can of beans. Now I'm looking at my wife all weird. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. You like, should go to sleep first. <laughs> you should sleep in a separate room. Like, it really made me, like, it made me question, like, what is this whole we sleep with others thing? <laughs> this is fucking unsafe. We all need a panic room. What if you go Glenn in the middle of the night and they fucking want to stab you to the brain? It's come to the point now where I wish for like some kind of ailment to lay me up in a hospital bed for like three or four weeks just to watch TV. Catch up on shit. Just to watch all the shit that I missed. You need an assassination attempt, dude. Ooh. Like Ronald Reagan in the 80s and shit so you can go to the hospital and you can just like convalesce yeah. while watching shows. <laughs> like, How about a tapeworm, you guys? Like I need to drop some weight. I need to catch up on some TV. Oh, yeah, and I don't want to fuck with any vitals. No, and just like... Mark yeah. can't fucking watch TV. Mark's got a new job. Got a jobby job, son. Let's close out the show with that. Well, number one, we're coming to Detroit. Go buy tickets at csmod.com. Watch me and Mark do fucking this live. Yes. With you guys and stuff. We'll figure out a format on the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, Detroit, what do you guys want? Yeah, what do you guys want to talk about? But uh, I'll, we'll probably bring people on the fucking show, dude, because we can open it up to Q&A. Yeah. Not okay. Q&A about like us, but like, let's talk about everyone, you know. Yeah, they all got a thing. Yeah, everyone everybody's knows. like, let's lean toward this. Yeah, who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> Tell me what the show is. They're like, are you fucking shitting me? I'm paying 40 bucks for fucking who's your favorite superhero? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the world we live in, man. <laughs> what do you think you were going to get? <laughs> fucking glorious. <laughs> Check off. <laughs> um, Speaking of check off, Mark got a huge classy job. Tell him about I got a classy, classy job, job, man. I'm working for the LA Times. I'm Robbie Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think. You just had to make it geek. I had you? to go geek. <laughs> like, <coughs> damn it, JJ. You literally could have went Perry White now. I could have. But you went deep cuts. I Robbie went deep Robertson. <laughs> That's in honor of fucking the Ditko looking Spider Man we saw on the trailer yes. this week. Um, tell him what that means. Yeah, I'm working. I'm a film editor for the LA Times. Now, for those of us that live out here, of course, like that's mm. like the LA Times mm. paper record. But to be fair, LA Times, mm. one of the biggest papers on the planet. You got yeah. your New York Times, you got your Washington Post, you got your what? One Chicago yeah, Chicago Tribune. Tribune or Sun Times. Yeah. And a, LA Times. LA man, Times. It's legit. San Francisco Chronicle. Like there's five of them left. And yeah. the <laughs> smart <laughs> works of one of them. <laughs> Part of my plan. <laughs> Just <a> one by <laughs> one. <and> close them. <laughs> Sam He's the alone. man who walks between I'm worlds. Closing the door on the Cheers bar when I leave. What uh, What does that job entail? That job entails seeing a lot of movies. I, that means you will see fucking. Ba oh, ah. now I'm sitting there going. I, I was like, was he seeing it early for? <laughs> fucking <laughs> Melee Times. <laughs> fucking work. Oh my god, dude, you're gonna see everything early. I'm hoping so. Really, that's all I'm in it for. Last <laughs> one, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's fucking sweet. Uh, yeah, but it's it's kind of like there's a bunch. There's like five or six really smart writers there. Mm. Uh, and it's just like helping them tell the, their stories the best way they can. Helping to set the tone. Helping to set a bit of an agenda. Not that I have one, but. And yeah. it's not even. Uh, what is the um, geek thing? Over oh, there? Hero Complex. It's not Hero Complex. You're the editor of the film oh, section. Yeah. That's yeah, all things movies. All the time. It's huge. I mean, Hero Complex will overlap, given that we're in the world we're in, where mm. every two weeks there's some giant fucking shiny geek thing. But the, but the no-brainer job is, would have been Hero Complex. Like, yeah. oh, this is what fucking you do well. But yeah. they were like, well, you do that in podcast. <laughs> As a grown-up, <laughs> you will talk about everything. <laughs> you will talk about foreign movies and real movies and real people doing real things. But Spider-Man, you guys... <laughs> He's got eyes that move. I was literally in a meeting. I'm like, so what's coming up for the next week? I'm like, next week? Fucking Spider-Man. 
and the week after, <laughs> Spider Man, Spider Man, and then Punisher. No Punisher's TV. You can't. But Punisher <laughs> and Electra too. And Electra. Yes. Um, we should mention. Uh, they've added another man who walks between the worlds, man. Ooh. Um, what's his name? J.K. Simmons. Yeah. Was just cast this week as in the Gordon. DC Universe as Commissioner Gordon. So J.K. Simmons, as we all know, mm. is over at Sony. The OG. Technically JJ. not. Yeah, the OG J.J. Joe Jameson. The OG in the Jones world Jones. of the movie version of Spider-Man, which yes. is not technically Marvel U, which means they'll have to get a new J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. Um, was, he, was he J. Jonah Jameson in the... Not in the second one. In the Mark Webb They ones? didn't even have one, remember? Right. Like, you saw his name, but he was too big to replace. They couldn't mm-hmm. replace J.K. You can't replace Vern Schillinger. <laughs> Vern Schillinger. <laughs> he will always be Vern Schillinger to me. That's all I'm going to rest. If you haven't seen Oz, right. and you really, really love J.K. Simmons, watch Oz and watch that love for J.K. Simmons <laughs> evaporate and turn into fear. It's also kind of like the role that he won the Oscar for mm-hmm. in, what was that movie? Whiplash. Whiplash. It's a less rapey version <laughs> <laughs> Of, of this Oz his in general worldview, which is like twenty percent less rape. Exactly, you just won't get a dick in your ass. Right, one hundred percent more Nazi. He slaps eighty percent. <laughs> and now he's Commissioner Gordon. That's a good, good call. It's a really good. Yeah, call. yeah. That's yeah. he's a really cool actor. And always has been, and he'll like he'll find a way. You know, Gary Oldman. We got to see the relationship with Batman grow. Mm -hmm. This is a Batman already established. So he's got to play his commissioner Gordon as I, I know that Bruce Wayne is Batman and has been Batman for years and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And deal with a guy in a suit and make that plausible. Yeah. Like we don't have to deal with the, yeah, the, the, I put a, I put my jacket around a, 11 year old boy it's yeah we've been doing this for 50 yeah. years now that's right i did the fucking 11 year old boy years ago yeah. well, not like that but i did and that's why they cast jk simmons ah <laughs> uh, folks that's, that's how we do it here in the fat cave man i guess that's all the news that's fit to print that's this all week. we got man Let's send him home, man, after a little fucking ear candy. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, thanks for hanging out with us here in the Fat Cave, man. Come back next week. We'll talk some more shit. I've been Kevin Smith. Mark Bernardin. And uh, you can catch us here every week. Same yeah. fat time, same fat channel. It's my guest. I come and get to do it. You get to say it. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir. Only at Smodcast.com. People for years always going, how come you don't do Jane Saw and Bob video game? I can barely make a fucking movie, as I've been told. <laughs> I can't fucking make a video game to save my life. I don't even wouldn't even know where to begin. So when somebody says, hey, I want to put Jane Saw and Bob in a video game, you listen, man. Justin Woodward, who's created indie games for a while now, has a partner on this new game, Jane Saw and Bob Chronic Blunt Punch. <laughs> a piece of genius. Now, Justin wants to do it because he's got credibility in the genre and whatnot. The guy who kind of brought it to my attention is Elias himself, Trevor Furman. Explain to all these people listening. So the story is Jay and Silent Bob, their customers are mysteriously missing and they decide to try and go find them and they go exploring and there's like a new mall that has opened up. When they get in, they quickly find out that they can't get back out. It's like a, it's basically like a labyrinth. God damn it, there's my mall rat sequel. (laughs) Each area is a different area in the mall. A recognizable place in a mall, like whether it's a Victoria's Secret or like a Brookstone or something. We're going to see other people from a universe in it. If we raise enough money, we'll be able to afford the licenses. Right, right, right. Our story stands on its own with the Jay and Silent Bob characters, but Perfect. we would love for there to be a pussy troll. Uh, <laughs> pussy troll would be hilarious. Yeah, and I would love to have like view askew characters come in. One of our goals in the conception of the game is as faithfully as we can, like translate the feel of view askew movies into mm. into video games. One of the systems that we're building is a conversation system that feels kind of like a fighting game. Like if you're Jay, these comic bubbles will pop up over his head. Uh, portions of phrases and you grab them from the air and it goes into a line at the bottom and then you build your insult. How the enemy responds is directly linked to how you choose your phrases. It's kind of easier to look. Yeah. The goal is to introduce cool dialogue into the game but not in a way that feels passive. Like we wanted it to 
feel more dynamic. That's yeah, fucking dope. Cool. We're going to make the character system so we can swap things out. Definitely. Mm. In your world, it's like you sell the game once and you can expand it like a year later or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like people who give us $25 will receive a complete game. Um, it's at fig.co right now. So they don't even have to add a slash your address. Once you go there, you are it It'll for, be for it, right yeah. now. <laughs> we'll put some money behind it, man. I want to see this game now. I've had a lot of people asking me, how do I get moose jaws? One of the easiest ways in the world, man, if you're a gamer and you're like, fuck, I'd like to be in that. Bang. Or if you just want a copy of the game, bang, you can fund. Or there's a bunch of other rewards. We have like 14 tiers or something going from 10 all the way up to thousands of dollars. Go to fig, F-I-G dot C-O and pump some money into this game, man. 